All right. Welcome, everybody. This is Horizon Weekly Insider number 131. Today is Monday, April 11th, 2022. We are live on Discord and YouTube as usual. And thank you for joining us. So please be aware that we're recording this call as usual. And it's going to be available for you to check out later in our Horizon podcast. Also, please remember to ask your questions for the team on Menti. We're going to be providing here the link on the chat section. And uh, let's get started right away. With Welcome, Alberto, to provide us the engineering updates. Welcome, Alberto. Hi, Henji. Thank you. So uh, let's start with Zendu as usual. And uh, the last week, uh, the previous software, Zen uh, 303, was subject to the scheduled deprecation. And as you know, we recently released a new software that is 310, and we also uh, ran four rounds of notifications to all our partner exchanges in order to have them updating to the new release. The last important thing about this release cycle is that uh, a hard fork will activate the mainnet uh, on April 19th, as also detailed on our blog post. For this reason, we are reminding all the pool operators to make their mining pool software compatible in addition to the upgrade to the new software. So and now let's switch to the SDK side. Uh, and uh, last week, we finished the code review of the feature that is adding the possibility, I mean, for testing purposes, to make the C site and withdrawal functionality optional. All the related changes uh, requests that have been addressed and the functionality is now ready for the final level of code review. Then two additional uh, first levels of code review that uh, were finalized last week were the one related to the development of the enhancement uh, to the sidechain nodes in terms of synchronization and storage and the node operating functionality improvements. Therefore, also these two things are now ready for the final stage of code review. Proceeding with the SDK side on the EVM sidechain project, uh, last week we continued working on the analysis of the RPC commands in order to be uh, compatible with the Ethereum ecosystem in terms of tools, wallet, explorers, and, and more. And I mean, this is uh, mean. This means uh, let me say making them compatible implies also restructuring. Uh, uh, let me say some part of the core to be able to uh, let me say provide the same kind of behavior to the RPC commons, and this is a, a crucial thing because I mean having the EVM uh, sidechain fully compatible, uh, let me say, will uh, open up uh, many more possibilities, and it it will make it easier uh, for developers to use it. So uh, this is ongoing, and we will have uh, more info soon. Uh, last but not least, uh, uh, regarding the SDK, we updated some parts of the documentation and we are uh, improving it, updating it uh, with the most recent information. Okay, that was everything for the SDK. Now switching to the proving system uh, where we worked on the design for the implementation of a common interface for the various accumulators that are needed for the development of the Darlin proving system. This allows us to easily generate, aggregate, and verify all the various types of accumulators which will arise during recursion, both in the linear and the uh, tree-like setting. And moreover, we performed a list, uh, a first benchmarking of the poly commit verifier gadget, evaluating several optimization that we developed. From the analysis of the results, we identified further possible optimizations, and we are now focused on their evaluation and development. And apart from these updates regarding the proving system, uh, last week we also worked on a general design of the proof verifier interfaces of the PCD scheme nodes, and continued to perform a lot of code review sessions of, for different parts of the, uh, of the code of the proving system. I mean, and regarding the PCD scheme uh, design, uh, this is a, a, a quite crucial part because, I mean, uh, it um, implies having all the traits well-defined and also having, a, a, let me say, some document uh, that uh, is uh, would be used during the development in order to provide to the developers uh, all the information needed for uh, addressing the various steps for, uh, let me say, adding this uh, uh, the PCD scheme um, implementation, and um, 
having, let me say, a guide uh, to proceed with it. Okay, so that's it for, the, for today. Back to you, Angie. Thank you so much, Alberto, and I do hope my day is a bit better. For that. All right, let's continue with Manu to provide us the VD updates. Thanks, Angie. Happy Monday, everyone. So these last several weeks, we have been working with our partners regarding Zen 3.1.0 update. And last week, we had a successful deprecation already. And I would like to thank our partners, exchanges, mining pools, wallets, and other service providers who upgraded already and are supporting Horizon. Also, big thanks to our dev and infra teams, as well as NG, who always support and make this upgrade this so easy in the hindsight. That's all from me. Back to you, Angie. Thanks, Vano. All right. Um, let's continue with Victor for the product and engineering updates as well. Thank you, Angie. Uh, just shared in the chat room uh, our latest uh, updates. We had this uh, week uh, the deployment of uh, uh, the new nodes uh, for uh, ZK Audit uh, that were based on uh, Blaze SDK latest version 031 uh, that is on testnet we had uh, recently uh, just yesterday found uh, a small bug uh, with the block explorer that uh, is uh, um, collecting the information of this uh, uh, zk audit uh, sidechain uh, it's a synchronization uh, issue because uh, the serializer doesn't uh, um, let's say um, decode correctly one of the boxes but it's something related to the fact that uh, this, uh, this node uh, were just updated. Um, proceeding with the, to the tokenization platform that is on testnet, uh, we have to inform that we had um, uh, an incident uh, caused by, um, let's say, not being completely uh, free to test uh, before the deprecation because uh, we had to wait for the deprecation to have version one sidechain declared. So just right after having uh, declared the first sidechain with version one, the previous uh, that were, um, let's say, based on a different version of the SDK, not the latest, not Blaze 030 or over, um, were seized because uh, they encountered uh, while syncing a block of the sidechain that contained uh, the main chain reference block uh, with the version 1 declaration that was not supported by the previous serializers. So we, uh, let's say, um, didn't have uh, the ability to notice that before having the, uh, the hard fork. Uh, that was uh, super actually uh, happened on testnet so we needed to deploy a new sidechain um, that is called uh, that is a version 1.0.0 of the tokenization platform um, about the web wallet we are working on the fixes uh, that um, are uh, let's say yeah, applying patches uh, for the audit findings nothing major really actually uh, the highest level of uh, security issues that they found is something that i saw commonly on uh, uh, let's say uh, big names of uh, wallets that you can find uh, in the industry and uh, are really uh, available for uh, public use and uh, already in production anyway also with the uh, block explorers uh, maybe i already said uh, uh, last week, uh, we had completely uh, had completed uh, the audit without uh, major findings, and uh, we are working uh, to bring also NFTs uh, on a later version of the tokenization platform. About the monitoring system, we discovered a little uh, the scope of the project uh, to launch it earlier and uh, already with the tokenization platform, so that we can monitor with our own systems that are. Uh, um, meant for uh, public release, uh, also this one from the very beginning. That's all. Back to you, Angie. Thank you so much, Victor. All right, let's welcome now Rob for the leadership updates. Wow, guys, you, uh, you flew through the updates today. Um, so it, all really good stuff. So let me say, first of all, congrats to the team for another successful Zendi release. Uh, it's a great point, Vano, on how smooth things are going. In fact, they were so smooth that <coughs> I even forgot to update my own uh, Zendee node. Um, so I found out when it stopped working. 
uh, thank you, Chronic, for my panicked, uh, why is this not working message and, and uh, get, giving me the crypto equivalent of uh, reboot your computer. So um, we should never take it for granted when things go smoothly in crypto. Uh, we should not take anything for granted in crypto, guys. So great job to the team again. Uh, you guys are absolutely rocking it. Uh, you guys have probably noticed that I've been a bit less engaged over the, the last several weeks on these calls. In particular, last week, I just straight up missed the call. Uh, I've been on the road with the teams. And, uh, you know, this was a month long trip to the Milan team uh, with engineering, with the engineering group, and then Miami with the BD strategy team actually last week. So that was also fantastic and really uh, eye opening. And in many ways, I could say both trips were. And let me just share some of my observations with you guys. So, first of all, we are absolutely what I call leveling up as an organization and we're doing it fast. Um, so we're going through a, a big tech expansion and improving how we operate. Uh, so the theme here is that we're we're basically a, as an organization we're in this this kind of funky transition phase of going from a deep tech R and D organization um, to now more of a deployment oriented structure. Just you know not with the entire group, but we are now in deployment mode for several things that you know frankly it's our first time actually doing some of these things. And you see the teams that we've structured over the last several months and the way they're operating, it's all deployment oriented focus. So what we've learned, um, you know, and especially this is from the, the Milan trip, uh, we will be integrating teams across functional areas. And you guys have heard me talk about this before, but now that, uh, you know, the, the conversations are done, we're gonna be now in process of actually forming these integrated teams. And the way you see the token mint team operating with a steering committee, with functional groups, all in one one team, that team having authority to do, you know, to basically execute on this roadmap. That's how we're going to structure everything, right? That's kind of the, at least the default for how we're going to structure things. And then when when and where we have to make an exception is an exception. Um, but the default will be integrated teams, and you know, just having this kind of granular decision making authority at the team level. Uh, there's just too much going on to be hierarchical with our decision making. And guys, this is crypto. You know, hierarchies in crypto don't exactly go all that well together. Uh, and would like to, you know, live what we preach, right? So also, what we've learned is we have to do we have to improve communications and collaboration across teams. Like I think we do a pretty good job, but especially because we are a distributed global team, we have you know a couple of different centers and different continents. So then people working remotely on different teams, different teams working in completely different areas sometimes. Uh, it's really important to make sure that everyone understands exactly how what they're doing fits into the bigger context and at least have some understanding about, about what the other teams are doing. I could say, uh, you know, first and foremost, because we are now a collection of uh, very good, smart, creative people. Uh, people want this kind of, it's more of a, a want than a need, or maybe both, actually, for this type of communication and collaboration, because people are genuinely interested in what other groups are doing. Uh, there's so much exciting fun stuff going on across the organization that you know different team members are just excited to see what's going on and it just makes for a better healthier organization anyway uh, we also learned that we need to hire more senior folks across the entire organization uh really just to get people you know like as we talk about these integrated teams and carving out you know the stack that we have into these product groups you know the big question is will each of these these teams be operating in you know the same or kind of at least operating in a general strategic direction together, um, because you always have the risk when you have these integrated teams that have their own, you know, like everything authority and everything in that group, you run the risk of the teams, you know, potentially going in different directions that might be orthogonal or at least different from the broader strategic direction of the organization. So we need, uh, you know, we need senior people to really uh, manage these processes, and we're going to be doing a bunch more hiring. So Check out if your community members and interested in working for either um, you know, the, the foundation or Horizon Labs, check out the respective web pages and you can see a bunch of open roles and we're just gonna be adding more to them. So last week I went to Miami and we had a, a BD and strategy team offsite. And I have to say, uh, we're operating a bit of a well-oiled, sophisticated machine uh, or something like that. Uh, I could say I, I say something like that with a, a smiley face in my notes next to it because really this team is just formed and let's see how they operate, how they really come together in terms of processes and you know being kind of like a, a brains of of the kind of like um, what's called strategic direction of the organization. Are we 
are we adequately understanding what's going on in our own industry? And are we tailoring what we're spending resources on in response or in, in response to that understanding and positioning ourselves at the forefront of the industry? Right. These are the questions that every org needs to ask themselves. And now I can say we've hired some just you know ridiculously talented people. And I was very impressed and this uh you know offsite that the group had. Now as a you know We've just added the strategy function. The BD team's been here for a while, and you can see they're actually a very high-performing team. Um, but really, they've been scaling as we deliver, and now it's time to really think deliberately about where we go next. Um, so really, what I mean by think deliberately is how do we prioritize, how do we scale, how do we make Horizon one of the best L1s in the world? You know, or, or are we an L0? I mean, we'll figure that out. Um, but really, what we've learned on the product side, going beyond that, is uh, you know, going back to this deployment-oriented culture, uh, we have just a couple of different hangups. Like as we race to market and as we're delivering things, we can find out where we need to improve. And the good the good news is we know where we need to improve. Right. So we know that we need to invest more resources into our infrastructure team. We need to automate much more of what we're doing. So this includes hiring QA and automated testers uh, for the organization, um, because thus far the teams have been internally crowd crowdsourcing their testing. Um, so we just need to continue to improve and professionalize how we do things so we can move faster. Now, beyond the lessons learned from all of these travels, I can say just uh, a lot more of the usual, which is a good thing for the org. So you've heard about Token Mint and undergoing testing right now, um, and that's moving to public testing soon. Uh, it's cool to see the audits coming back. Um, not that we're looking for perfect audits because you know you should always be suspicious when an auditor doesn't find anything. But what they're finding, like Victor said, are things that are just perfectly consistent with what we would expect, you know, in particular from the rest of the industry and other products out there. Like when our wallet uh, audit comes back and we see that there are common issues that other wallets have, it's great to spot them and identify them early on so that you know, we can actually fix them before we go into production. But I can say the process has just been very smooth and professional, and that's what I'm happy about is about the process. EVM work is ongoing, so we're going to be structuring that uh, a little bit more formally and getting timelines out to you guys in the near future. And speaking of structuring, so what, what I said before about these integrated teams, this week we'll probably set up uh, officially the steering committees for the SDK and the EVM teams um, so that we can formalize the structures and uh, just get a little bit more clarity for you guys so you can understand how these new different products are coming along. Um, let's see. So in what Alberto mentioned is that now that we have a little bit more insight from all of the other stuff that we're doing, you know, from the EVM project and different projects that we're doing, um, you know, from the business side, we see how important it is to be Ethereum like. And, you know, obviously we, we know this because we're doing the EVM project itself. But what Alberto mentioned is that we're actually taking lessons learned here and integrating that or reshaping um, the SDK. All right, so uh, there'll be more news coming there, but we realize the SDK itself would be better suited being more Ethereum-like, so that it could resemble more of an Ethereum node, um, so that we could take advantage really of just the network effects and just the intersection of where the rest of the industry is in terms of tools and developers and just really making that experience as uh, seamless as possible for people who just are used to working in that environment. Um, so anyway, a lot more coming there. Uh, lastly, I'll mention that we're augmenting our team significantly. I, I talked about hiring before, but we're not just hiring people. We're also uh, taking on some very, I'd say, fortuitous um, crypto, like cryptography and R&D uh, relationships that we're forming. So we have, uh, you know, a couple of or a few other uh, people that are coming on as uh, researchers and advisors uh, with ridiculously impressive um, cryptographic um, CVs. So more to come on that once we actually. Uh, formalize things, get projects rolling. We'll share more with you guys. And also in Miami, uh, we, I, I was very happy that one of our uh, developer partners, the CEO of that company, came down to meet the team. And uh, we just had we integrated him directly into our strategy conversations. And what resulted from that is uh, we may have a very, very significant and important partnership forthcoming that we'll be uh, sharing with you guys if things roll forward there. But you can just see the way that we're thinking is scale and how are we going to scale it, whether, whether that's organizational process improvements, team restructures, or we pull on advisors and entire teams that can just carve out areas um, to work collaboratively with, collaboratively with us so that the ecosystem can really accelerate. That's the goal of everything that we're doing here.
Anyway, I'll stop here, guys, and we have some time to kill. You can, uh, we can open it up to Q&A. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rob. And definitely exciting times for the team. All right. Thank you, everybody, as well, for contributing with your questions. Let's go and check out the top three. The first one is, will you get some high-end NFT slash art designers to launch NFT on Horizon? Uh, suggestion can be to reach out to Alec Monopoly and see if he wants to launch on Horizon. I mean, the answer is absolutely yes. And uh, Rohan, if you're here, you want to comment on that at all, since the BD team's been doing exactly that. Uh, I'm not sure if Rohan's here. If not, I see Dean. Hey, yeah, you have Dean here who, who can certainly uh, answer it. So the answer is yes. We are working very closely with a number of different artists and designers and uh, projects in general. Um, I would love to partner with Alec Monopoly. In fact, uh, when I was in Miami, I uh, went into a, um, an art store and saw one of his paintings or, or artworks that was just amazing. So for, for him to work in Horizon would actually be especially uh, interesting and exciting. But yeah, so we are... Um, waiting for EVM to be in a slightly more mature stage. But then at that point, we will be getting many projects to launch in Horizon. Great. The second question is, uh, well, looks like a timeline. There's a timeline for us to try the new tokenization platform, even on testnet, maybe. Let us test it. Victor, what do you think? Sorry, here am I. Um, yeah, as uh, soon as possible. Actually, we are just, uh, uh, we, we noticed, uh, we should have uh, noticed before, that uh, what we were building uh, requires a little of knowledge prior to start uh, using it. Uh, as we saw before, we have a sidechain in testnet and you can check it uh, with some uh, uh, common line, uh, um, let's say, APIs you can uh, uh, send to uh, Zendi directly, but uh, yeah, you still require, uh, let's say, access. And uh, for the tokenization platform, given that uh, we thought about a phased rollout, so um, we have the focus for the user experience for the tokenization platform. And uh, this platform will be, um, let's say, uh, is meant for uh, to be used by um, an end user, so without... Uh, uh, invoking directly uh, sidechain nodes uh, and then deep. So uh, once we will have uh, the two pieces that you will require at a minimum, uh, actually they are three. One is called the token generator, uh, one we don't usually talk uh, too much actually. Uh, that is the web page in which you will uh, declare your token and uh, mint uh, uh, the tokens you uh, we're thinking uh, for your uh, tokenomics. Of course, uh, this platform um, is, uh, uh, let's say, was tested by us with API calls, uh, but uh, we wanted that uh, to be self-explaining. But um, let's say a minimum uh, of uh, explanation is required. So we, were, we, we are expecting this documentation to be ready before uh, uh, letting you use it. Thanks. All right. All right. Thanks, Victor. And the third and final question is, what is the budget situation with Horizon and Horizon Labs during this sideways market? Do you have enough to deliver the roadmap and for development? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, more than enough. So, I, I mean, without getting into specific numbers, I mean, I think our break-even point uh, is, uh, so it, I mean, for the foundation, I would say, like, there are definitely two entities here. Horizon Labs is self-funded, capitalized, and um, has resources for the indefinite future. And the foundation is, um, you know, at least above break-even right now, given the sideways market. So actually, uh, and has a bunch of reserves. So I, I think things are actually in very good state right now, especially compared to previous markets. Um, we're doing really well. Awesome. All right. So those were the top three questions. Thank you, everybody, for contributing with them each and every week. Um, so I'll say that's a wrap. I'll see you all in next Horizon Weekly Insider. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.